Hey guys, this is Justin Cunningham with Procure SQL. In today's video, we're going to take a quick dive, query this data. So the way we're going to do that is we'll hop back into Lakehouse. And as you can see, the options we have here is Lakehouse and the SQL Analytics endpoint. So we want to go to the SQL Analytics endpoint. Once we're in here, we get a nice pretty preview of our data. And then we also have the option up here to write a new SQL query. So if we click on this, you can see we can start typing T-SQL and querying this lake house directly here within Fabric. So I want to query the airline delays table that's sitting out here. And as you can see, I can see all 3,300 records that are sitting in this table. Now, like I said, I enjoy using SSMS. That's how I started, you know, playing with data. So that is the most comfortable place for me. So let's see how we can actually get there. So if we actually click on this settings log, there's a SQL connection string sitting there. So we want to copy this connection string and then go into SSMS. We'll go to connect database engine, just as you're used to, paste that in on the server name, connect with Azure MFA and authenticate. And once you do that, you have access to your lake house and your warehouse database that you would have created in Fabric. So again, you can see all 3,300 records sitting out here. I can query that table. It's all good. And then just to show, you can also query the unmanaged table. Just the same. It's all here. The performance is going to be very similar. So the limitation that you do have on the lake house side is that this is a read-only connection to that Delta table. So. If I were to go here and try to drop the table, as you can see, I don't have access to do that. So the only way that you would have access for read write is if it's not in the lake house within SSMS, it's within the warehouse. The only way that you have read write uh, abilities on the lake house is going to be within your fabric notebooks uh, and using your Spark cluster to actually do your, you know, whatever kind of statements you want to do. You want to drop a table, if you want to do a merge and update anything, that's where you're going to update all of your lake house data. So what we can do is you can see here, I was able to take the top five airports that are sitting in my lake house and write them into the warehouse. And so here you can see, I just loaded that, I wrote it in. So we do have write ability on the warehouse, dropped it in. So we have five records sitting in here. So here, um, a lot of people will have more familiarity with the warehouse side, you know, if you're, if you're more, familiar with T-SQL and store procedures and views, this is going to be very familiar and comfortable for you. Um, on the lake house side, that's going to be more your Python and your Spark clusters and actually writing notebooks to actually do some of that data processing and heavier lifting. So, and you can utilize both, which is nice, because now what you have the ability to do is say, well, say I had a filter here that has a handful of airports, but I want to take that filter and I want to join it to my lake house. Well, guess what? You can. So here we have a query. We're sitting as the database context for the warehouse. We can pull in those five airlines and then join it to our lake house. And as you can see, we don't have 3,300 records anymore. We have 89. So this is how you could take your raw data that's sitting in CSV and move it up into your lake house and if need be in your warehouse. And then if you had a need to cross the data sets, you have the ability to join them. So I think that's a very, very nice feature within Fabric and really opens up the door to a lot of opportunities um, with what you can do with your data. So thanks for watching the video and have a good day.